Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously, I've been telling you about Lady Caroline Stuart, who, following her marriage in 1778 to John Dawson, future first Earl of Port Arlington, had come to live here in Ireland. While very happy with her husband, Caroline found life in the Irish countryside rather lonely, and she was therefore delighted whenever she and her husband were invited to stay elsewhere, but found also solace in writing long letters to her younger sister, Louisa, back in England. In October 1778, the couple went to spend a few days at Carton, County Kildare, with the Duke and Duchess of Leinster. While there, they were taken to pay a call on the Duke's aunt, Lady Louisa Connolly, and her husband, Tom, who lived just a few miles away at Castletown. The couple had no children, and so Lady Louisa had devoted herself to improving Castletown. Among the work she undertook in the house was the creation of a print room completed ten years before and which I discussed in an earlier series that you can find here on my YouTube channel. Caroline described Castletown as a very pretty place, though flat, but there's very fine wood, a fine river, and views of mountains from every part of it, so the flatness does not strike one so much, and I never saw a place kept so neat and nice. The group were first brought to drink tea in a cottage in the grounds. Caroline doesn't say which one, but it may well have been the Batty Langley Lodge, which Louisa Connolly had recently constructed, although at that date it wouldn't have had the Gothic facade which was only added in the mid-1780s. Then everyone went up to the house, which Caroline described as the largest I ever was in and reckoned the finest in this kingdom. It has been done up entirely by Lady Louisa and with a very good taste. However, what most caught her attention was the gallery, which she thought furnished in the most delightful manner with fine glasses, books, musical instruments, billiard table. In short, everything that you could think of is in that room. And although so large, it is so well fitted that it is the warmest, most comfortable looking place I ever saw. And they tell me they live in it quite in winter, for the servants can bring in dinner or supper at one end without anybody hearing it at the other. In short, I never saw anything so delightful. And so we move on, as indeed did John and Caroline Dawson, returning back to their home in County Leash. But some years later, in September 1785, just after he'd been created Earl of Port Arlington, they embarked on a much longer journey, this time travelling all the way west to County Kerry. This was quite an expedition a journey of at least 150 miles that took several days to make by horse and carriage. When they eventually arrived at their destination, their hosts were John Crosby, 2nd Earl of Glandore, and his wife Diana, who lived at Artfurt Abbey. Lord Glandore, who was described by one contemporary as a strange, absent, staring sort of being, had only come to live at his ancestral home two years earlier, somehow persuading his cosmopolitan wife to join him there. Lady Glendore was a daughter of George Germain Viscount Sackville, remembered for being Secretary of State for America during that country's War of Independence, not an indication on which he is deemed to have acquitted himself particularly well. As for his daughter Diana, prior to joining her husband in Kerry, she had lived in London, running up debts there through gambling, Indeed, Louisa Stewart had written to her sister Caroline that Lady Glandor had become a most dissipated fine lady, flirting, gaming, etc., beyond her fellows. Although Louisa did then add, in truth, I suppose she was unusually silly. When the Port Arlingtons arrived at Ardfert, they were fulsomely greeted by the Glandors, which Caroline could quite understand, because, as she wrote, their neighbourhood is thin, and she's been here these two years without stirring, which, to be sure, is doing penance for a young woman that likes diversion as much as she does. And they have no great resources here, it being an old-fashioned place in a very bleak country with a bowling green surrounded by clipped hedge to look out upon. Artfurt was indeed an old house with wonderful panelled and painted interiors, alas, 
all lost when the house was burnt during the Civil War in 1923. Lady Glendor longed to modernise some of the interiors, which of course Caroline could quite appreciate. As she told her sister Louisa, there are a few trees just about the house, but I must confess it is a dismal place, and he is so partial to everything that is old that he's determined not to alter it. The house is also in the same style, small, low rooms, wainscoted, and the drawing room perfectly antique, which he won't let her alter. Poor Lady Glandor. And on top of everything else, while she was entertaining her guests, a letter arrived at Ardfert to say that her father, Viscount Sackville, had died. The poor Tarlingtons duly offered their condolences and moved on. In the next episode, I'll tell you where they went to next. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. Goodbye. Thank you.